I used looking for a lightning arrow build guide for the upcoming main event. Don't worry, I've got you covered. Hey, I'm Cyclone and today I want to share with you my lightning arrow which I will play for the upcoming Mayhem event. Now, two f oh, well, one big fair warning. This build is squishy as heck. It's very very squishy and if you don't know exactly what you're doing, I cannot recommend picking up lightning arrow for the event. If you just want to get to level 95 or whatever level you want to get quickly, Take a different build. Just if you take this, take this for the enjoyment of playing it. And if you want to see how far you can go with it, not for getting to a specific goal, because this will die a lot. It's not going to be fun dying a lot, but it's once you get over the early part of uh, over the a lot of dying, the clear this one provides, it's going to be really good, which is why I'm taking this for the upcoming event. I'm also not going to cover the whole pass of building. I will also not be going into a huge, huge setup for this. This is just going to be a quick coverage about the low investment section, the mid investment section and the leveling section. So you know what to take, where to take it. And at that point, you should be able to get to level 95. And if you want to go further, there is more information in this pass of building. However, I will not cover this in this video. I just want to keep it short and compact information for those that want to use this for the Mayhem event. You're going to kill all bandits. You can consider uh, not killing all of them, but we really want passive points. It's very important to get those. And as the duration of the Mayhem event, I will just say kill all don't get our Lira, even if we want the resistances, killing all is going to help us more in the long run. And we are would want to use the Soul of the Brine Key to get freeze immunity until we have elemental avoidance, and then either Soul of Lunaris or the Lars, whatever you prefer. And we want Soul of Everest for the Burning Ground immunity. Because we want to map later on, and for the mapping part, we want to take the Zealing Exact Influence, and we don't want to care about the Burning Ground, uh, burning ground effectiveness. So for our sentry, we are taking far shot into ricochet uh, into endless munition, gathering winds, and as a force one ricochet. Focal point is something we do not need. We are just want to do fast mapping. The other four are going to help us more with that. And we only need ricochet as a last lap because we can just use piercing shots, have plus three pierce. And which is going to be enough map clear until we get to the fourth lap. Until then we can use chain and after that we can use a rake and fork if we play enough of this. Now the rest of the tree is fairly simple. Using a Lionite's Fall with the Claw and Dagger nodes to get our damage in our crit multi as well as a good amount of attack speed. We're taking the generic damage from Master Fletcher, the crit from King of the Hill. We're taking and love nodes here so our inspired learning is online. Taking Fervor for the Frenzy Charge, Herbalism for Life, Accuracy for Accuracy Rating, and Heartseeker for Crit Multi. Taking Innervate and Entrench to get our Spare Suppression capped. And then for the rest of the tree, we're taking a bit of Penetration. We're taking Reservation Efficiency for Grace and some Life. Some more Life here, some more Life here, and more Life here. Generic Reservation Efficiency, Jewel Socket for Replica Conqueror Efficiency. One jewel socket for corrupted blood immunity, and then of course it's jewel sockets for lion eyes fall and inspired learning. And honestly, I mean there is long shot and there is mark for death and lethality, but the tree is really just a generic damage, crit chunks, crit multi, life, and spell suppression basically, and then one node of elemental penetration. Now there is also the cluster here. Utilizing Feed the Fury, Fuel to Fight Martial Prowess to get all the leech we need. Now you can replace Martial Prowess with anything, but it's going to be the one we actually can use, while the others aren't really helpful for us. And before we get this, we can take Clever Thief. Medium Cluster is going to be Repeater and Streamlined. Now for the Medium Investment, we are going to do a tiny switch. We're going to take out King of the Hill, so we can fit a Survival Instinct. An intelligence dot, which we will likely need, and natural remedies, which allows us to have flask duration. And we're going to utilize the sources, which you will see on the gear section. And that is pretty much the tree that I'm going to cover for now. The leveling section I will get to into a bit. For the skills, we are going to utilize lightning arrow with trinity, elemental damage with attacks, inspiration, chain, and mirage archer. 
chain is the last support we're going to take until we have chain until we have the six link just take the three peers on the ascendancy uh, on the atlas tree what on the passive tree now we got it we're taking tornado shots ballista before we have tornado shot ballista we will be using uh what was the name let's see um x3 it has Artillery Ballista, that's the name. Alright, we're going to use Artillery Ballista until we have a 5 link and we have a level Tornado Shot and a level Ballista Totem. Uh, before that, Artillery Ballista. We are buffing our damage with an Arcanist Brand, Tornado and Hydrosphere and having Power Charge and Crit. Utilizing Rest and Grace's Auras and a Sniper's Mark on Hit. Utilizing Flame Dash and Mirage Archer as Mobility. And we are utilizing Blood Rage as an additional attack speed source. Now you can transition into a tornado shot during this if you have uh, if you be able to pick up a cheap tornado shot helmet. However, I think for mayhem lightning arrow might be actually be better. I'm going to cover it anyway. We're swapping out lightning arrow for tornado shot, and we are already using tornado shot for the ballistas, and the rest is the same. All right. Before getting into the item section, I will be live streaming this on Twitch. You can find a link to my Twitch in the description if you want to see how it works and you're going to leak start a bit later. Feel free to join to see how Lightning Arrow is going to do in the campaign. And yeah, that's basically it. If you want to see how Lightning Arrow fares or if you want to see me suffer with Lightning Arrow because it's not going to fare too well, likely, feel free to join me on Twitch. If not, don't worry. Hopefully I see you in the next video. Alright, let's take a look at the low investment items. We want any decent arrow that has lightning and fire damage. And utilizing... Uh, I just saw that there's cold damage to spell. I need to change it. And cold damage, for lightning damage and fire damage. And in attack speed world and crafting crit chance. We want any arrow that has plus one. And it has a good amount of life. And then either cold, lightning or fire damage. And an open prefix to craft elemental damage. Or an open suffix to craft attack speed. We want to use either an Azina's Mark or we can use a Helmet with Lightning Arrow Enchantment. We want to use a Hyrus Eye for the, a lot of cold damage and the free spell suppression as well as a huge amount of evasion rating. We want Resistance with Life Gloves and Resistance with Life Boots and can also add the Movement Speed Onslaught Craft so we have Onslaught in our maps. As our amulet we want to use a Yoke of Suffering which allows us to apply... Uh, because we are applying a bit of lightning, a bit of cold, and a bit of fire damage, Yoke should give us a nice amount of increased damage. And we want to use a Taming, utilizing the increased damage again. As for the other ring, having a ring with uh, minus mana cost is going to be very useful. And having some lightning resistance and needed strength on it will help too. On our belt, we just want strength and life and chaos rest if we are able to. If not, that's fine as well. And craft fixing resistances. And then use an Abyss Jewel with fixing stats and life. And our flask of choice are Diamond, Jade, Quicksilver and a Slipknight Flask. We are fully committing on evasion and ignoring armor and being a let's do not get hit build. And for our life flask use an instant recovery on low life that removes bleeding and corrupted blood. And when we get to the medium section we want a better elemental DPS bow. We can still use the same quiver. We are definitely want to use a magic helmet now that is also reducing the mana cost of lightning arrow or tornado shot. In general, just reducing the mana cost will help a lot. We want a body armor. We are going to focus. This is our first big focus on the rare departments. After based, um, I guess the bow is a bit more important, but if you are want to survive more, the body armor should be the first thing and then getting the bow. We want a high life armor. We also want to get avoidance on the armor via an unveil. And then getting a max life craft and if possible a chaos suffix. If not just elemental uh, resistances or stats for the suffixes. We are going to upgrade our gloves a bit to get a suppression roll there. A spell suppression chance roll and a spell suppression implicit. And if possible rage generation. And then fit more resistances if doable and life. In our boots, we want to use an essence to get elemental avoidance, get elemental avoidance on the implicit with 35 on boots, or up 32 to 35 on boots, 32 to 35 on the body armor, 20 on the tree, and then getting about 15 on this should cap us out on avoidance. 
or 15 to 70 should cap us out of voyage and we can get more action speed which is more movement and attack speed is perfect and then again craft onslaught on the boots and we keep the yoke the taming the bell uh, the ring but we are upgrading to a soul source which then utilizing the increased effectiveness uh, increased duration flask to utilize soul eater to have a better map clear that much for the gear section now let's take a look at the leveling of course for the mayhem we don't have drink leveling but if you do any items on these are pretty good but some items that you should definitely get quickly the tabula is definitely a go-to item that's very good doom fletch can be very powerful for us for early leveling and we can get it as early as level 28 but the most powerful leveling item as far as i notice is the prism reef giving us a huge amount of flat damage that's definitely going to push us a lot once we get to level 25. Otherwise, a barracks group is also pretty nice, but it's not giving as much elemental damage as a prism reef. Alright, for the leveling tree, we want to start rushing to precise technique. Afterwards, get some life here and the precision and the accuracy rating, because we want to get uh, keep our accuracy rating above our life. Then we're going to get more life. And we are also going to get Master Fletcher. We're going to get Winter Spirit because we have a bit of physical damage on our stuff, with which we do want to convert in utilizing Lightning Arrow or utilizing the Artillery Ballista, just getting a bit of cold damage in there. So our Trinity is going to be consistent. Going to use Primal Force to get more um, more elemental damage and utilizing the Pierce to so we can twist into Lightning Arrow after the first lap. Now with the first lap, as mentioned, we're taking far shot. We're also going to finally get clever thief, so we have life and hit and life on leech, and going to go for more life. A mini respec here, as you can see. We're also going to go over a quick step now, starting our spell suppression, and getting a tiny bit of movement speed. Second lap, we're picking up Ender's munition. We're getting penetration with force of nature, and we're moving towards revenge of the hunted. We're also picking up long shot down here. Then we're going to get Charisma, we want to get the Grace Mastery so we can finally start fitting our big auras. And then we're going to get our Lion Eyes set up. For this Lion Eyes fall, you can just start farming, once you get to Act 6, you could farm in the Mud Flats, uh, trying to get a full jewel. If there is a good um, Delirium, uh, not Delirium, is if there is a good Mayhem encounter which should be perfectly fine to just farm there for a bit. At that point, you should have very powerful gear, a powerful clear. So just improve your gear a bit, farm a bit in mud flats, and maybe get a few uh, lion cards, or just buy a lion ice fall. Also, we should get our, at some point, uh, our final lap, getting ricochet, and you can also push the lion ice fall back until you get to the fourth lap. And the final court tree without clusters looks like this. That's pretty much everything except just missing what skill gems we're going to use. Of course, those is covered here as well. We're going to start using Caustic Arrow for the early levels. I'm really big fan of Caustic Arrows for Act 1. It's going to give, have enough clear without putting anything into DOT. Utilizing Shrapnel Ballista or Burn End or Burning Arrow for a single target. Having the Burning Arrow is, I think, the optional part. Shrapnel Ballista is going to help you more because it's also going to take focus from the bosses of you. We're going to use dash and blink arrow until we can no longer use dash, where we're just going to use blink arrow. And out of act one, we want to have rain of arrows, mirage archer with added cold damage, shrapnel ballista, added cold damage, chance to bleed. We want to keep the blink arrow dash as mentioned as we can, have a precision which we're going to level up, uh, up to level 20, just level it through all campaign. And we're going to buy an LMP and elemental weakness, which uh, sorry, and the elemental weakness which can get from the gloss corrupted. Just keep a life search on that. If we can get elemental weakness curse on hit on the gloss, that's going to be a huge boost. But it might be too expensive to get early on. If that's the case, you don't need this. But just get the LMP. In Act Two, we're going to get some sweet upgrades. We are going to keep our Rain of Arrow, Mirage, Archer, Added Cold, and Shrapnel Ballista with Added Cold, but we're going to add Elemental Damage with Attacks. We're going to get Herald of Ice and Herald of Thunder, and we're going to buy Blood Rage, Trinity, Elemental Damage with Attacks, and Point Blank Support. Because once we get into Act 3, we're going to add a Awakened... Uh, I don't know why that is Awakened. That's supposed to be norm Normal Elemental Damage with Attacks. 
because a vacant you definitely don't get at that point. We want to use this as a falling. And this as our falling for single target, artillery ballista, added cold damage, elemental damage with attacks, and point blank. We're going to replace Herald of Thunder with Rest, and we're going to disable Precision, which should still keep us at enough accuracy rating based on our tree. And we're going to get Sniper's Mark as our curse of choice, because there is not really any other good option at this point. And we're going to level Grace, and we can still optionally have an elemental weakness. In Act 4, we're going to take lightning we can start using lightning arrow here however i think using rain of arrow for a bit longer until you have definitely have the pierce is going to be good because we want to use lightning arrow lesser multiple projectiles again with a raken what did i do here elemental damage with attacks and then added cold or trinity if you can consistently keep trinity up use trinity if not use added cold damage you want artillery ballista, added cold, elemental damage with attacks, and concentrated effect because we're now using far shot. We want to keep our blink arrow. We want to keep our herald of ice wrath. We want to have a mark on hit from sniper's mark, which we get at the end of Act Four. We can use blood bridge, and we can use an ice golem if we have an empty green spot. And we want to get chain to level it in the offhand. And then during between Act Six. And maps, you can finish up your setup. Yeah, I don't know why I keep doing that. Sorry for that. Lightning arrow, elemental damage with attacks, trinity, added cold, GMP, inspiration. If you can get any of these five together, you can also use inspiration instead of added cold or trinity. If you are not able to cap trinity or if you have all the uniques for flat damage, artillery ballista, elemental damage, inspiration. Added a cold damage foc uh, concentrated effect, focus ballista. Here in this case, focus ballista is something you want to get until later in maps. First, you don't want to use it for campaign. And concentrated effect, if you have everything else, you don't need concentrated effect for that stage. Your overs of choice will be precision, wrath, and grace. You're going to have a hydrosphere, power charge and crit, and a tornado power charge and crit in the debuff helmet. If you do not have the Arzena's chant, don't worry. Just use the Cosmic Damage Taken and Mortal Card Hydrosphere. Remember to keep Cosmic Damage Taken at level 1 and Hydrosphere and Immortal Call at level 3. Sniper's Mark on Hit stays. We can use an Ensnaring Arrow with Power Charging Crit as well on top of the Cosmic Damage Taken for making more damage with our Artillery Ballistas when they don't have Focus, uh, focus Ballista yet. We want to replace our uh, Mirage Archer with a Flame Dash and we want to keep our Blood Rage. And then we are back to the setup we started with. And that's pretty much everything for Lightning Arrow. If there are any more questions, feel free to ask in the comments or later on and tomorrow on stream if, I, if I'm live. All that being said, have a wonderful day. And hopefully I see you in the next video. Goodbye.